Hi friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I'm so happy that you're here. Um, let's just get right into what this thing is. Uh, we're doing one of what I hope will be many reading vlogs. So I'm filming this to open the video up. I don't really have a lot to give um, other than I'm behind on my reading goals for the month. Um, that is not surprising to me because I knew that we had a lot of stuff going on last week. I'm hoping to play catch up this week. And um, not that I'm going into a reading slump, but my attention has been more toward writing here recently. So I'm hoping I can at least get through the books that I have um, planned for the week. So fingers crossed there. Okay, let's get into the books that I plan to read. I know I'm not going to get through all of these this week, but I want to try to work through as many as I can. So I have started reading American Queen by Sierra Simone. I'm only like 2% in. This is the book that I'm most excited to get to this week, but um, I don't know. You know, reading on your Kindle just seems so much faster and you can take it anywhere. So I do plan to finish this this week. I'll, I don't want to say I'll finish it first, but my excitement is here. In my last video, I mentioned that I'm participating in Becca's Spookopathon reading challenge. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I rolled for a prompt and I did not have a book that fit the description. So the rules state that you can roll again, but you have to pick two books from that prompt. Well, when I rolled, I landed on Community Shelf. So I had to draw two cards. Um, the first card that I drew was um, Community Shelf card to read a romance book and I picked for this prompt practice makes perfect it's pretty short I loved the first book and I was actually really excited to get into it then I just was dragging my feet about it so I thought this would be perfect to get into um the second prompt that I pulled and I have to look because I completely forgot okay um is read an adult a young adult book now when i pulled this prompt i thought now is the time it's spooky season it's fall i've been wanting to read belladonna since i got it this is the fairy loot edition um so this is what i pulled off of my shelf but my friend Kathleen and I, who's also here on YouTube, you should follow her. We are um, in the middle of the Grishaverse series. And the next book is Ruin and Rising. I'm not excited to start that book. It's been two months almost since we've been in that world. And I'm not really excited to get back to it. Um, I do want to finish it because I want to read the Six of Crows um, duet. So I may have to put Belladonna on hold um, for Ruin and Rising, but we shall see. We're going to play that by ear. So that is the update that I have for now. Once I have some reading done, I will update you on what I've read and how I'm feeling. Hello friends, it is Tuesday afternoon and I'm just hopping on here to say I have the most minuscule reading update. I had to work in the office today, so I did get some reading done on my lunch break. Um, I read American Queen, I think only two more chapters. Nothing's really happened yet. I'm only 5% in, so I will give another update on that once I get further in and have more thoughts. Okay, that's all. Let's talk American Queen. That's what I'm reading on my Kindle. 
It follows Greer Galloway, who is the granddaughter of a former American vice president. So what I have gathered so far from this book is that Miss Greer is a bit of a goody two shoes. Um, kind of a loner. She seeks to herself. She did have a run in with what she's calling a wizard. I don't think that this book has like a fantastical element to it. Um, but I don't know. But, um, she has been given a warning about her kisses and how powerful they are and that they should stay to herself. And she has lived her life keeping those kisses to herself. Um, it's kind of been a back and forth from like the past and then we see the present. And typically I do not like those books. So we shall see how I feel about that. In the past, we have seen uh, Greer at a couple of different ages. In the present, we have seen her, I'm gonna say she's 26, just based off of um, the past age, I think that she's 26. So, um, and she's working, she is very accomplished and um, I don't wanna say, I think she's in a comfortable place. I'm not going to say a good place, a comfortable place. But in the past setting, we have met um, one of her men, suitors, if you will, um, that will end up being the president of the United States. And in the present, we have met the other man who will end up being the vice president of the United States. So... This is going to get interesting. I will keep you updated. I think I'm only at about 13 or 15% right now. So when I have a little more thoughts to give, I will. Oh, I did. I've stumbled across an ick, but this book is already playing in the taboo realm. So I'm just going to talk about it. There is a scene where she meets one of the guys in the past when she is 16 and he is 26. That, that didn't sit well with me because he asked her like, are you 18? And she says no. And he kisses her anyway. Mm -mm. Okay, a little bit of time has passed and I've been able to um, get some reading in during my lunch and breaks and the trauma that is about to ensue. I need to unpack this. So in my last clip, I talked about the kiss that happened when Greer, our main character, meets Ash for the first time, which is gonna kind of zoom past that. And all that happened was a kiss, but baby girl is infatuated. Like sending him emails over and over that he does not respond to. What? So that was 10 years ago. Then we found out that she met em Embry, Embry, Embry. She met Embry five years ago, who is not only the vice president, but is Ash's best friend. And he was her first. Embry finds Greer present day to let her know that Ash wants to meet her. And Ash has, you know, not contacted her in 10 years, has been married, and his wife passed away. But she agrees to meet him. And he's like, now's our time. Let's make this work. 
And she's like, yeah, let's find a way. But Ash does not know that Embry and Greer know each other. And she's sitting on this secret. Embry's sitting on this secret. This is chaotic, a chaotic update. But also, I just read the first like spicy scene. We're only 25% in. What's about to happen? <laughs> Okay, I had to make myself take a break from reading because I realized I was getting further ahead without actually providing an update. I am currently at 54% and a lot has happened. So we have gotten more information from the past, specifically when Greer and Embry met. We've come back to the present seeing more interactions between Ash and Greer and like all of the little like mysterious conversations that are happening around um I don't want to say the couple but that's happening around Greer and it's almost like number one everybody in this book is screwing or has screwed each other. Ash and Greer have just had their first public appearance at a at the White House state dinner. Before the state dinner, we see an intimate or almost intimate interaction between Ash and Embry. Everybody is like, oh, Ash has these secrets and I know what the secret is. Greer does not know what the secret is, but she is very naive, but she's also very intelligent. Um, the book smarts are definitely there. The political smarts are there, but it's almost different from like street smarts. Cause she, like I said, she's very, she's very green. So, but I, I am enjoying it. And the spice, <laughs> the spice in this book, there have been uh, uh, a few scenes so far and uh, I feel like the heat is about to get turned up another notch. This is my first Sierra Simone book. I don't know if I've said that, but um, <laughs> if it gets any hotter than this, my fingertips are going to be ablaze. <laughs> friends it is a new day it is friday i am um just checking in because i did make it to 73 percent last night in american queen before i had to put it down and go to sleep um i vaguely remember what i last updated you all on but a lot just keeps happening we get some revelations from ash's past that's kind of like what <laughs> and we just you know skip on over that um there is a six week time jump where it's kind of explained how the three of them are moving around each other but they're not a thing and we have finally got a confession from Greer I cannot remember her name from Greer to Ash about her and Embry's past, which <laughs> a lot happened before that confession, more happened after that confession, more happened after that confession. There is just a lot going on in this book and my eyes have been the size of quarters for like probably the last like 25%. Since my last update, um, I am hoping that I can get this book finished today. So 
I will be back when I have more to update you on, but I'm still liking American Queen. And I think there's more in the series. I need to look that up. I think there is. If there is, I, right now, I will probably continue. I'm feeling like this is at four stars. Okay, we've made it to 82% and um, I don't know how much more reading time I'm actually going to be able to get through. I realized that I have not mentioned a certain character, Abilene, who is Greer's cousin and best friend. Abilene just hit on... Ash and Greer's first instinct was not to check her cousin, not to confront her and say, now what are you doing? And it's not like it's a secret that these two are together. Greer made sure to tell Abilene before the state dinner where Greer and Ash officially announced that they were a thing or made it known that they were a thing because Abilene had been harboring this crush for Ash since they were 16 as well. There have been multiple times in this book where she has just been nasty to Greer because Greer is supposedly prettier than she is, I guess. And it's, I, I don't like, like, the jealous, like, catty woman thing that we have going on because I would like for Greer to have somebody that she could trust that is not involved in this romantic relationship. But I have not liked this Abilene person since she was introduced and... You get a lot of her in the backstory. You get very minimal of her in the present day until further into the book. But still, it's very minimal. But I just read that part and I was like, there is no way in the world that my cousin, who I have been calling my best friend, could ever hit on my man and I not say anything. Career, what is going on? I mean, I know you got a lot going on in your mind, but sweet child, this ain't it. Check your cousin. Hi, friends. It has been two days since I have come to give an update. It is now Sunday. I finished American Queen on Friday. I'm here to give you my final thoughts and um, wrap up this video. So overall, I did give this book a 4.5 stars. That was my initial feeling. And after sitting with it for a couple of days, I'm still kind of feeling like a 4.5. Probably when I put my book um, rating up on Goodreads, I'll probably round down instead of up. Um, where do I even start? So I guess I could start with like characters. Let's first talk about Greer, who is our female main character. I appreciated the character that she was after looking at some reviews. Um, some people called her like weak and I'm trying to move away from not liking weaker, not weaker, not, not liking like female main characters who are not like aggressive. 
I felt like Greer acted in a way that a person who was raised in the political landscape that she was raised in should act. I think that while she was naive because of the decisions in life that she made to, you know, guard her heart and focus on things that were not a relationship is fine. I think that she showed fire and spirit when she needed to, except when it came to her cousin, Abilene, but that's a different story there. The two male main characters, Ash and Embry, um, I, I liked them both. I think my biggest issue with this book is I would have liked to have everybody's POV and not just Greer. I would have liked to know what the guys were thinking about all of this that was going on in the story. Um, Ash, our dominant king. <laughs> that was... That was fun to read. I think I would have liked to see more of Embry, but I know the next book is Embry. I really hope it's not just one POV. I haven't heard anything else, but I have a feeling it will be. But like I said, I, I am a fan of seeing multiple POVs in books. I think I said this in one of the other clips. As far as character goes, I wish that Greer had somebody else that she could have counted on to talk to about the things that she was going through because it, it's really just a lot and she thought she had Abilene to lean on and I knew from the jump that that was not going to be the case. As far as the plot goes, I liked the concept of the story. I feel like I would read this book again to pick up on the way the angst ratchets up. I'm not saying that I missed it, but I feel like I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have. Um, but the build up to the end was so good. I was explaining this to one of my friends and was telling her that in writing, I've been hearing a lot about world building and how the world building it's not just in fantasy. And I know that sounds crazy to say, because of course, like every author builds their own world in their book, regardless of the genre. It, we just typically refer to world building in fantasy. But this is one of the first romances that I feel that I, I, I felt like I acknowledged the world building a little more consciously. And maybe it's because I've been hearing about it more or maybe because the world building building was just that good in this romance book. But I'm I'm very curious how the next book will uh, pick up and where we will go. As of right now, I am planning on reading it. I don't know when I'm going to get to it because there's a lot of stuff on my Kindle that I need to um, start reading. <laughs> and I'm trying to be good and do like a book that I own on my Kindle and alternate between that and a book that I've borrowed on KU because I have tons of books on my Kindle and I have reached my max on my Kindle Unlimited um, borrows. This is not something that you need to go into lighthearted. It is an MMF thruple situation by the end of it. The writing of the scenes are very explicit and done really well. Um, definitely five chili pepper rating for me. <laughs> I like how the relationship between the three came together in the end. Um, it just felt like it was done really well. This book does end in a cliffhanger, so there's your warning there. The cliffhanger was a little like, oh girl, we kind of saw this coming. Things that I did not care for with American Queen. I did not like the meeting of Ash and Greer in the beginning. Um, I wish she could have been aged up a hair. I don't think it would have taken away anything. Um, but that was probably the biggest ick for me. Um, like I said, 
I wish that Greer had somebody outside of Abilene that she could have leaned on um, throughout this whole situation that she found herself in. And I could have done without the backstory of Ash and his half-sister. I could have done without that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I am going to close out this vlog. I know I only got to one book. Maybe we'll have better luck next week, depending on what our schedule looks like. But if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, share. Um, let me know if this sounds like a book that you would read. Let me know if you've read it and what your thoughts were. What did you rate it? And... Um, if this is not your type of thing, let me know what you are reading this week. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.